In this video we're going to discuss writing information protocol or RIP. This is a RIP troubleshooting video. We've been told that in this topology router 1 on the left cannot ping router 4 on the right. So let's verify that. Ping 4.4.4.4. We can see that the pings are not succeeding. So the information that we've been given is correct. I'm going to disable IP domain lookup to speed up trace route, and then I'm going to use trace route to 4.4.4.4. We can see that the trace gets to 10.1.1.2, but then doesn't get any further. So show IP route. We have network 4.4.4.4 in the routing table. It has a administrative distance of 120 and a hop count of three. It's available via 10.1.1.2. The local interface to use to get there is gigabit 00. So we are learning about that network through a routing protocol, which in this case is RIP. Show IP protocols shows us that RIP is enabled on the router and it's learning routes from 10.1.1.2. Again, when we trace to 4.4.4.4, the trace gets to 10.1.1.2 and doesn't get any further. So let's have a look at 10.1.1.2, which is router 2. Show IP interface brief. This is router 2. This is the IP address that the trace route is getting to, but it's not getting any further. Can we ping quadruple 4 here? Yes, we can. Show IP route. The route is available in the routing table. It was learned via RIP. And we are able to ping network 4.4.4.4. So let's have a look on router 4. If the traffic from both routers gets to this router. So I'll repeat the ping once. Ping succeeds and we can see that a reply is sent back from router 4 to router 2, 10121, this IP address. Now let's do a ping where we specify the source address being 10.1.1.2, and I'll repeat that once. So we're pinging from router 2, but we're pinging from the gigabit 00 interface. The ping fails, here we're told that an echo reply is going to be sent, but notice the echo reply didn't get back. So let's do a debug IP packet here. Be very careful with this command in the real world. I'll do the ping again, and notice what we're seeing here, unroutable. The router doesn't know how to send the traffic back. Do that again we see unroutable. On this side, if we ping quadruple four and repeat it once, we also see unroutable messages for destination traffic of 10.1.1.1. So the traffic is getting to router four, but router four doesn't know how to get back. Notice in the routing table, Router 4 has learnt about network 3.3.3.3 .3 and 10.1.2.0, but it's learnt about no other networks through RIP. So for some reason, Router 4 is not learning the RIP routes. Let's have a look at Router 3. Show IP route. This route is learning about the loopback of Router 4, but it's not learning about network 10.1.1.0 or the loopback of router 1 and router 2. So let's have a look at the RIP database. The RIP database on router 3 only shows these networks. 10.1.2.0, 10.1.3.0, these two networks, and the loopback of router 3 and router 4. It's not learning about this network, and again, the loopbacks of router 1 and router 2. Can router 3 ping router 2? Yes, it can. So we have IP connectivity between the two routers. Router 2 is learning about routes from router 3. 
but router 3 is not learning about routes from router 2. What does show IP protocols show us on both these routers? On router 2, RIP version 2 is used on all interfaces. That's true on router 3 as well. Router 3 is routing for network 10 and network 3. Router 2 is routing for network 2 and network 10. It's got two gateways. On this side, we've also seemingly got two gateways. But notice how old this entry is. There seems to be a problem with routes learnt from router 2. These entries are fresh. This looks like a stale entry. Debug IP RIP. Debug IP RIP. Are RIP updates being sent and received? This router is sending an update to 224.009 out of gigabit 00. So it's RIP version 2 using the well known multicast address. It's received an update on gigabit 00 sends an update out of gigabit 00. What about on this side? Sends an update out of the loopback, that's not of great importance. Sends an update out of gigabit 01. So router 2 is definitely advertising routes to router 3, but it doesn't look like router 3 is receiving updates on gigabit 01. It's sending out an update, but where is it receiving an update on gigabit 01. It received an update on gigabit 00, but I don't see any updates received on gigabit 01. Router 2 is definitely sending updates out of gigabit 01. So it's sending updates to router 3, but it doesn't look like router 3 is receiving those updates. Let's turn off debugging. Show access list. Can you see the problem? Show run interface gigabit 01. Can you see the issue? RIP uses UDP port 520 for updates. So if I use the command access list 100, deny UDP any any equal 520, that would equate to RIP. So show access list would show this entry. That entry equates to this entry. In other words, 520 equals RIP. So what we need to do as an example is go onto gigabit 01 and remove the access group from the interface. So previously, we had this IP access group bound inbound on gigabit 01, which means that the router would not accept any updates from RIP because of this entry. Notice we are getting matches on that entry. So RIP updates were being denied on router 3. Show IP route. The IP routing table looks a lot better. We have these entries in the routing table. And if we have a look at router 4, previously notice we only had these entries in the routing table. But now we see this network as an example. So router 1 is now able to ping the loopback of router 4. We've successfully solved this issue. Be careful with access lists. RIP sends updates on UDP port 520. If you are denying UDP port 520, RIP updates will not be sent or received, depending on how you bind your access list, whether it's inbound or outbound. So be careful with your access lists. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel I wish you all the very best.